I have another meal I want to share with you today. This is a classic for all of us who went camping as a kids, and that is pigs in a blanket. The difference being this will be a low carb version. If you're interested, keep watching. All right, before we get started, just a couple things I want to mention. First off, here are my challenges for today. It's breezy, and I'm hoping the wind is not affecting the quality of the sound that you're hearing. I'll do my best to make sure that doesn't happen. And the other challenge I have is deer flies. Mosquitoes don't seem to be an issue today, or the black flies, but deer flies are all over the place. Now, you can probably see this, and I have a full video on it. This is my Dragonfly Wingman that I reviewed before. It's the only thing that I own that is actually effective against deer flies because all the repellents, they, I think they like the taste of the repellents. So this is working, but it's not stopping them from flying around. They're just not landing on me. So a bit of annoyance. So if you see me slapping at myself, you'll understand why. Okay, so we're going to make pigs in a blanket and we're going to make a low carb version of that. And really it's not all that difficult. It's just a matter of finding the right pastry dough or puff dough or whatever you want to call it to cover the pigs up. The pigs being, in this case, are breakfast sausage. I know a lot of people use hot dogs. I'm not a fan of hot dogs. Sausages, breakfast sausages, they have to be cooked. So we're going to do that first, but then I'll make the dough and wrap those up. All right, full disclosure. This is my third attempt to do this out in the woods. The recipe that I had attempted to use before is my fathead dough recipe that I've used successfully to make pizza with. But the last two times I tried to do this out here in the woods using the fathead dough, I just can't get the dough to come together properly. So I've come up with something different. It will be an experiment today. I'm going to be using another recipe that I have used successfully out in the woods, and that is my flatbread or my pita bread recipe. And it, it, it's actually quite a good, easy to use, almost never fail recipe for flatbreads but I've changed it up a little bit so that hopefully it will make a good dough for wrapping the sausages up with it. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is go down to my prep surface on the ground next to the fire pit. I'll show you the components for this. I'll show you how it's going to go together. I do have to get a fire going first to cook up the sausages and then to heat some water to make the dough with. So let's do that. All right, I have assembled in front of me all the ingredients and tools that I need. Well, not quite all the tools. I have a baking setup that's going to be new and we'll talk about when we get to that point as well. So what do I have? Start of the show, sausages. So I have six, six little breakfast sausages in this waterproof container. They have to be cooked up, as I mentioned. I don't know that my dough will extend to six sausages, but we're gonna see once we cook them up because they do shrink down in size. So I may be able to get all six uh, mixed or wrapped in dough. In this bag is the ingredients for the dough that we'll wrap it up in. I'll give you the measurements and the ingredients now, but I, of course I'll put the full recipe and directions in the video description underneath. So in here I have a quarter cup of almond flour, a quarter cup of coconut flour, two tablespoons of psyllium husk, two tablespoons of three cheese powder. So that would be Romano, Asiago, and Parmesan. So you could use just straight up Parmesan for this. One half tablespoon of baking soda, not baking powder, baking soda. And to go with that, to activate the baking soda, I have one half tablespoon of apple cider vinegar in this container. You need some type of an acid to activate the baking soda. I'll be adding in one tablespoon of olive oil. And to mix it all together, I'll be using about a half a cup of hot, and I mean hot, like boiling hot water, but you'll see that when we get to it. The reason for the hot water is that's what activates the psyllium husk, and it is the psyllium husk that is the binding agent for all of these ingredients so that they remain pliable and doughy and don't fall apart. Now, just, I um, thought I'd mention this now, uh, then I'm using almond flour because that's probably the most common and the most available type of low carb flour that people have available to them. But you can substitute this out for something else. If I wanted to go completely coconut, fire, uh, coconut flour, you could. Coconut flour has some advantages. It cooks up a little lighter. It doesn't get brown like almond flour does. Um, it doesn't really have much of a flavor. It doesn't hold together all that well. That's why the psyllium husk is there but it's a little bit more carb intensive. There's a few more carbs in coconut flour 
probably the best alternative to the almond flour is something like lupini flour, but that adds a little bit of yellow color. So if you don't mind the yellow, then lupini flour is a really good choice. You choose whatever you want to use to make up your recipe. And the again, this is an experimental recipe. It is based on my flat, be, uh, flat bread recipe, which I know works well, but I just added a few ingredients to see if I couldn't make it a little bit better. Well, that's part of what an experiment is to see what happens. So what's going to happen is once I have the sausages cooked, I'll be setting them aside because they have to be cold. I'll be mixing this up for a bowl. I'm actually going to be using my Überleben titanium Kessel to mix all the ingredients up in so I didn't have to bring a bowl with me. I'll be setting the dough aside for about 15 minutes. It helps to set up and you'll find, and you'll, as you'll see, it becomes very pliable. So yeah, and then of course we'll have to roll it out into circles or ovals or something to wrap each of the sausages up in. So to get started, we're going to have to get a little fire going and fry up the sausages. All right, so um, today I'm using the UCO flat pack grill and fire pit to do my cooking on. I'll be using the small version for the first half of this cooking. I'll be using frying up the sausages on it and then I'm going to be heating some water up to mix into the flour mixture. So uh, I had to wait to uh, the fire died down a little bit so things weren't too too hot. <sighs> put my fry pan on. I am just going to put a little bit of uh, oil, I guess it was the easier thing to get out here, a little bit of olive oil in the bottom of the pan just to start the sausages off. They'll of course start to do fine on their own once the pan is a little warmer. Oh yeah, sizzling, good. The pan has a bit of a bow in it. That happens sometimes when you first put it on the heat, but it'll either straighten out or I'll straighten it out. All right, very good. Where are my tongs at? So no magic here. Just got to keep these things moving so they don't burn, get stuck to the bottom. Take a few minutes for them to cook through. And then I'll let them cool off and we'll go on to the next step. All right, sausages are cooked, nice and browned. I did have to add a little bit of wood to the fire, but they are now ready. I can take those off and let them cool down. And now I can go on to the next step, which is heating up a little bit of water to mix up my dough with. All right, now that the sausages are cooked, I can prepare the dough because it's very quick to put together, but as I mentioned, you do have to let it rest so that it fully congeals or fully combines itself. So I'll start off by dumping my flour ingredients into my kettle. And into that, I'm going to be putting there's my ingredients in the kettle, by the way, just so you can see. I'm going to be putting one tablespoon of olive oil, and this is going to be a bit of a call. I don't, I don't have a measuring thing, but uh, I'm pretty sure that's close to a tablespoon. And I'm going to mix that through, and it's not a lot of oil to mix through, but if I just take a second to kind of mix it through, distribute it around, And then I can add the next ingredient, which is the vinegar. Some of it's sticking to my spoon. There, that's better. Now let's add the vinegar. So one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. It could be any vinegar, honestly. It's, it's what the original recipe called for. And once that mixes with the baking soda, it activates and immediately started to bubble up. I don't want it to do that completely yet, so I'm gonna mix it through the ingredients and right now they just look like a little bit of clumpy ingredients don't they okay so 
This is where the magic happens. I get my hot water. I have about a cup on to heat here. Let's see if it is hot. It is hot, but not boiling, I think. All right, if it's steaming, I think that'll work. So I'm only gonna mix in a little bit. So I'm only mixing in a half a cup. So that's not very much. Again, I'm guessing and hoping. Now, if you've done this right, you should end up with what kind of looks like a sticky dough. And I'm thinking I need more water. Add a little bit more. And I know now why it's uh, a little bit different than it was the last time I tried it. And that's because in this one I have the three cheese powder where before I didn't. Half a cup of water worked perfectly for that recipe, but not for this one. Actually, a considerable bit more water. Hopefully, I have enough water. Okay, now it's starting to come together the way I wanted it to. There we go. Yeah, that's much better. That's what I was looking for. So almost a cup of water, but that's the whole trick. Have a cup of hot water ready and just add a little bit at a time until you get the consistency you're looking for. You can see it's not sticking to the sides of the pot. It's picked up all of the flour. Now, if I were to try to pick that up and work it with my hands, I would probably find it a bit sticky to my hands. And that's the reason why we're gonna let it set for a few minutes. Upwards of 15 minutes. 10 minutes is probably fine. Yeah, I think that looks just the way I want it. So all I can do now is wait. I'll put the cover on just to keep bugs out of it. And when it's time to make the patty so we can wrap the sausages up, that's when I'll bring it back. Okay, so time is moving on and I do have to get this lunch going. It's actually going to be more like an early supper than it is a lunch here in the woods and that's just fine. I'm in no rush to go anywhere. So, okay, next step. My dough is all set and ready to roll up and divide into segments or sections. I have my pie plate turned upside down. This is what I use for the top of my frying pan to create an oven. I'll talk more about the oven in a few minutes time. And here are the sausages all ready to be wrapped up in the dough. So a couple of things, you can do this a number of different ways. This really is a boon to cooking in the woods, and this is parchment paper. Parchment paper is just one of those things. It's great for cooking at home. It's great for cooking anywhere. Very lightweight. It just saves a whole lot of hassle when it comes to, uh, you know, not sticking and not having to clean up afterwards. And it's very disposable, and it burns well. Just don't throw it away in the woods. Burn it or take it home. Okay, so... The other thing I have, and I use sometimes, is this. This is a circle I cut out of one of those barbecue sheets that you can use on your barbecue at home. It's a heat-resistant material. It's also non-stick, and it works pretty good. I'm actually going to start off by using this so that I can divide this up in and see how many good-sized pieces of dough I get. I'm not sure if I'm going to turn this into six uh, patties, or maybe just four. We'll see. Uh, all right, well, it's looking pretty good so far. Okay, so the trick, of course, is to try to make this as even a divide as possible. I'm going to start by cutting it in half. Set aside. Cut it in half again. Cut the other one in half again. Four pieces, yeah? No, I'm going to be able to get six out of this, I'm pretty sure. Probably should put them all back together, but I think what I'll do is take a piece off of each. That creates number five. I think I need a little bit more dough there. So this is creative cooking at its best. I probably could have done a better job of, with this. All right, that's all right. I need just a little bit more dough for each of them. Yeah, that should do it. 
and I think a little bit off of this one. Okay, I think I have six reasonable size chunks. So now here's where the parchment paper comes in. Take your ball of dough, kind of form it into a patty if you would like a hamburger. Try to keep the wind from blowing it away. And nothing needs to be perfect. You don't have to roll this out so thin with a water bottle or a rolling pin or anything else in order for this to work. Just roll a patty. Okay, I think that is size enough for one. Could probably make it that a little thinner in the center. Yeah, that'll do. Okay, take one of my sausages and roll it up. Now, I'm going to have to set these aside as I do them. So, I'll do one more and then I'll do the rest off camera. Make a patty. and just flatten it out. If it's a little oblong, it's actually probably a little bit better for doing this with. So this piece of dough turned out to be slightly smaller than the first one, but only slightly. Oh yeah, that's the other thing I put in the dough. Just, I can smell it now. I put garlic powder in. I think it's a nice compliment to go with the cheese powder. So I'm going to pinch the ends on them a little bit. Probably won't make a whole lot of difference. Okay, I'm going to do the rest of these off camera, and then I'll set it up for baking, and you'll see how that goes. All right, so there are my six pigs in a blanket, all ready to go. And a little sticks are getting in here. Uh, all ready to go into my makeshift oven. So just a, another little tidbit is to place them seam side down. That way they don't unroll on you unintentionally when, while they're in the oven. Probably a little bit more crowded on this plate than I would have liked, but uh, I think it'll work out fine. Now, my oven. Now, this is something I have done before in these videos, but I've done a bit of a modification. So, this is that Pele pan. People have been asking me about it recently. It is just a carbon steel Pele pan that I use a lot. You can see it's getting dark with uh, seasoning. It's, it's just a great little pan for carrying around, not too heavy. Uh, it works out well. In the past, I have used a pizza stone to put in as a heat sink to cook on top when I did pizza in the wood. It worked, but the pizza stone is just a little too large for the diameter of this pan, and it was sitting off the bottom, and I wanted to have something in direct contact with the pan. Now, I do have another stone that I picked up at the thrift store that does fit in. It's not a pizza stone. It's actually a marble stone that fits in well. But today I thought I'd come out and try something a little bit different. Again, a bit of an experiment. This whole thing has turned out to be a bit of an experiment to see how well this works. So I need a heat sink and I'm, it's also going to turn out to be a bit of a spacer. So this is a cast iron fry pan. A, one of those little tiny cast iron fry pans that you can buy that are very low sided. I think they're sold for doing cookies in or something. I cut the handle off. The handle was right here. I think I paid $5 for it at the thrift store. My intention wasn't to use it for cooking in, although there's no reason why I couldn't. I could put it right on top of one of my wood stoves and use it as a small cast iron pan. But my intention is, is to lay it inside of my other fry pan, lay these in on top. I'll have both a heat sink and a spacer now. And then I'm going to place this on top of that. And now there's my oven completed. I'll be able to heat it from below and take some coals out of my stove and put on top to heat it from above. Just quickly, I thought I would mention this because uh, people are asking, you know, is this, is this got any value? I mean, why bother doing this if you've already got one of the others? Well, this is lighter and smaller than a pizza stone. So the, the, this little cast iron pan without the handle comes in at 18 ounces, which is over a pound, yes, 510 grams. It's six and a quarter inches wide or 16 centimeters and it sits a half inch tall. So my mini pizza stone that I have comes in at 29 ounces, so heavier by 11 ounces, 830 grams, eight inches in diameter or 
20.4 centimeters, but it is also about a half inch thick. So, you know, in terms of thickness, it's, it's pretty much a wash. But what I like about this is I've got this little piece of cast iron that I could use for cooking in all by itself. It fits in much better and I get a bit of a spacer. Everything is ready to go. All I need to do now is to get it on over the heat and I'll show you doing that. Okay, the stove I'm using today for the baking is something I'm reviewing for a separate video. This is my UCO flat pack grill and fire pit. This is the medium sized one. A lot of people refer to this as the large, but there is a larger version. So I've had a fire going in it for a while now so that I could generate coals. So I guess the first thing I'm gonna do is take out a half a dozen coals that I will be using on top of my pan. So that looks like a good one. And I'm going to need to replace some of the coals with a little bit of wood so that I can keep the fire going from below. Maybe, is there any more good sized ones in there? Ooh, hot. Plenty of heat. All right, that should do it anyway. And I think I'll just throw in a couple pieces of wood and that should be great. Now, let's get the grill on. Now, I'm not going to set the grill on sideways, just makes it easier to get on and off. Now, ideally, I would have let this preheat so that the oven comes up to temperature before I even start cooking, but that's all right. This will still work. Get those coals up on top. I may have to add a few coals. Okay, how long does this take? Well, if I was at home, I would probably say 20 to 25 minutes at 350, 400 degree oven. That's Fahrenheit degree oven. Uh, I'm in the woods, so there really is no hard and fast rules. It depends on how hot your fire is, how hot, how warm it is outdoors. But uh, I'm, I'm going to guesstimate 15 to 20 minutes. I may have to move the coals around, get some new coals up on top. But uh, what I'll do is I'll check them from time to time. And when I think that they are ready, that's when I'll bring you back. All right, I'm going to attempt to remove the cover over my oven while it's still over the heat. A bit of a tricky thing. What I have been doing is taking it off and putting it to the ground because it's a little safer that way, a little less hot. But I just want to be able to show you how it's doing right on the heat. If it looks good, we'll, uh, I'll take it off the heat. If it doesn't look good, we'll put it back for a few more minutes. Oh, yeah, they're done. Yep, absolutely. They're done. Did you see that? That's hot. Okay, I think what I'll do is transfer it to the ground. It will take a few minutes before I can even take it out of the fry pan, and that'll give me enough time to reposition the camera so we can do the taste test. All right, I think I can give you a close-up. Let's see what happens. Oh, they're still quite warm. So they all puffed up nicely. They filled the pan. That's what I meant about having a little bit more space. I kind of expected that they might actually kind of puff or grow into each other a little bit, a little bit more than I would have liked. Let's see, I got to adjust the camera just a tiny bit more here and maybe bring it in a tiny bit. All right, now, like I said, they're still kind of warm. They could stand a little bit more cooling off. So here's the full admission. I think if I had been thinking when I packed my bag, I would have packed mustard or some other condiment to put on top of these. Uh, I did remember something after I put them on the burner and added it, but I haven't mentioned it yet. And that is uh, everything but the bagel seasoning. So I sprinkled that on top. I wasn't sure it was going to stick. It did. It stuck to them. So I've got everything but the bagel seasoning sitting on top of these things to give it a little extra flavor. Still not quite centered in. All right, all right, now as long as the light cooperates now, let's take one of these guys out because this is not only a test of the oh, test of the recipe, but it's also a test, oh yeah, of whether or not that little tiny cast iron pan worked because at one point I had quite a bit of a raging fire underneath it and I was a little afraid I was going to burn it. Nope. No burning there, nicely browned. 
and the coals on top browned the top of them just nicely. The dough is quite still quite soft. Uh, that's why I like it for using for flatbreads. It means it remains flexible even after it's cooked. But I think it's going to work well for this. Now, if you're used for used to a hard crusted shell on the outside, this isn't. This is. It's got a little bit of a crust, but it's more of a, a softness to it. Maybe that's better. It won't fall apart. Let's, let's check it out. Okay. <laughs> I mentioned when I opened up that this was my third attempt at doing this. When I had looked for a recipe, the recipe that I had come up with called for a fathead dough, which makes a lot of sense because they work very well. That adds extra fat and protein to the meal as well. But it just wasn't coming together. So I found and I felt that the work it takes to make that work, make the dough work, just wasn't worth the effort to share it with you. So I, was, I looked for something a little bit simpler and I found it. And I think I couldn't have done better. So what is different between this dough and one that I would use for straight up flatbreads? It was the three cheese powder. You can call this a modified, a Frankenstein fathead dough if you want. But it's all flavor. Mm. Wow. Yeah. I got five more of these things to eat. Well, I've got a container. If I get full, I can put them in. In terms of the macros, six sausages. Be careful when you buy your sausages. You don't get something that's full of sugar or full of wheat products as fillers. Try to get them as clean as possible. You can tell that from the nutrition on the back. Do your best job. I mean, sometimes you just can't help it and you have to accept some extra carbs. The carbohydrates for the dough came out of a quarter cup of, of almond flour and a quarter cup of coconut flour. The really, uh, the psyllium husk doesn't add anything. None of the other ingredients add any carbohydrates. Maybe a tiny bit in the three cheese powder, but that also adds protein and fat back in. I won't say it actually is a full on keto meal because I'd have to work the macros out and I will prior to this video going out, I'll put it in the video description, but it's definitely on the low carb side. It's definitely enjoyable. It's definitely something that most people should be able to do out here. And it's definitely something I'm going to do again. I think that's the best way to say it. Oh my goodness, that's good. I got to hurry up and finish this video so I can eat some more of these things. Okay. That was my pigs in a blanket recipe. This is mine not taken from anybody else. It's my own recipe that I came up with. So, and you're welcome to share it. You're welcome to make suggestions and please do make suggestions. If you would do something differently, some substitutions, some additions, then by all means, give me that in the comments sections. If you have any other recipes that you would like me to attempt out here in the woods that are on the keto or low carb side, I have one that somebody already did give me and that's beef stroganoff. Working on that working on beef stroganoff. Actually, it shouldn't be too hard. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll try and see what I can come up with. Uh, if you have any other comments, then please put them all in the comments section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.